Hello, hello. We are going to make our um, first journal cover. And I actually have already cut them perfectly because I know what might happen while I am recording. Um, but for this one, we are using, uh, we're going to upcy upcycle a, a current book cover. Um, it's a really great way of using, you know, a decent book board. You know it's a decent book board because it was already a book. <laughs> um, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I make um, covers using old books. Now, I like the flat edge. I prefer not to use the rounded edge that was already on the book. I do smooth it off and I'm going to show you, I think I've already shown you maybe in a video before, um, but I'm going to show you what I do. Now, it's a bit of a funny camera because I turn my board this way, um, portrait instead of landscape, when I'm doing this kind of cutting and I do hope you're going to be able to see. So the first thing I do is decide what size I want my book. Now, um, this is a sheet of A4 paper, which is slightly smaller, I believe, than American letter um, paper. And I will either use um, A5 or A6. Now, I'm making A6 today. And what I want is I want a little bit of a gap all the way around my my pages and um, I like a bit of a gap here so if I put trim in it doesn't hang too far over the book for example. So what I've done is, I hope you can see, um, an A6 um, book page. The covers will be 15 and a half by 11 and a half centimetres, that's how I do them and I've tried to translate that, it's about a six and one eighth by four and a half inches um, please don't hold me to that, but it's roughly that, I think. Um, I didn't use Google, I used the ruler. Um, so I can't tell you exactly how accurate that is because I don't really understand it. So um, because I've already cut one um, book cover from this, I've already got a nice straight edge. So what I do is I'm going to line this up to the edge of my board and I want this um, 11 and a half centimetres high. No, I don't, I want it 15 and a half centimetres high. Now, this one is already 15 and a half centimetres. The book was obviously just over 30. Um, now, I am just about gonna be able to trim off Very, very little I need to take off this. And this is absolutely worth spending time over because you want to get this right. Otherwise you have a wonky book and there is nothing worse. I use, um, this is a, I don't know, this is a Magnuson. It's like a Stanley knife or I think you might call it a box cutter. Now I'm going to very, very, <laughs> I'm going to try and cut this as best I can in the position I'm in because the camera is right at my head. Now I do a few slow cuts first before I start pushing down too deeply and it already looks like it's not going to look fab because it was at the edge of the book. No, I'm very very glad I've already cut this cover. I think we're still going to get a reasonable edge. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's not that's not great. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a journal that is very slightly smaller and I'm going to cut this to 14 centimeters. So this will kind of be this one, not the one we're making, this one will be smaller, which means I'm going to have to trim all of the papers and it's probably going to be nearer the size of a passport size journal. But that's fine, this is not the one we're making. You want to stick to these measurements if you want to make an A6. 
Um, I'm just going to do this one as a demonstration. Okay, so we have our book that way. Now I want to trim this edge. And what I do is I line it up on a horizontal line and on a vertical line. And I'm going to take off a centimetre and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start off fairly slowly and then start putting a bit more pressure on as I get through the bookboard. Now, you can use your rotary cutter for this but it wears the blades out really, really quickly. Okay, so this is the stage where I'm going to turn my board around because I now want to cut at this angle and it's easier for me to have it this way around. Okay, so we now want to come in 11 and a half. So again, I line it up with a vertical and horizontal line and this book is slightly smaller so where I would go 11 and a half for this particular book I'm just going to go 11 for this particular cover and we're going to cut and then we get a nice straight edge and what I do to make the next one is I line them up so they are perfectly level and I use that as my guide for the next cover but I do very carefully cut along that line because I do not want to cut the book cover that I've already cut nice and square okay so this will be the front and the back of our cover and then we have this piece which is going to be the spine. Now you could use um, obviously any book cover, you could use the front and the back and you could cut them down accordingly. Um, the other, th we'll cut the spine before I show you something else. <laughs> um, now I'm going to have three signatures in the book that we're going to make. So I like a centimetre between each signature. I'm going to have three signatures so I'm going to make this four centimetres. Uh, four centimetres it's just over one and a half inches just over one and a half inches um, but I'm going to go four centimeters and I'm going to cut it backwards so I'm going to line this edge up with a nice straight line and I'm going to do four centimeters it's just because of how the board is it's easier for me to cut the smaller piece off and have my ruler resting on the larger piece I always like to do odd numbers of signatures when I do a hard journal and the reason for that is I like to have a centre line to sew my middle signature in. I find it a lot easier doing an odd number so I usually do three, maybe I do five, um, I mean I do do two and um, obviously single signatures but I much prefer to do three um, or five. So we now have our three pieces of book board that are the same height. So I'm going to put those ones aside because those will be another book for another day. I'm going to take this board off and I am just going to zoom the camera in a little bit so I do apologise if I make you feel a little bit seasick. Okay, I think that's about right. So here are the book covers and the spine that we are going to use to create our book. Now I've picked um, this gorgeous vintage fabric um, that I have tea stained and ironed although it's been kind of <laughs> against my desk all day. The reason this is so big um, is because I had originally cut this for um, an A5 journal um, but then I thought it's going to um, probably take too long and I don't want this journal to take forever to make on film because I know some of you prefer shorter videos. So we're going to make an A5. We are making another book though. We're going to make a gutted book. So we're going to do two. So what I'm going to do is just roughly line up the book 
I'm going to take my scissors and I am very roughly going to cut. We're going to trim this once we have glued our book board down so this does not have to be perfect and I will use these cut off bits of fabric to make pockets or flips or all sorts of things so that's that piece done okay so this is very similar to how I made um, the the other book um, what was it called the Shakespeare very similar to how I made the Shakespeare book. Um, I've got a, um, a brush. Um, I use this for smaller bits. I have got a bigger one somewhere, but I can't find it anywhere. And I have my fabric fabric glue, which I have managed to get some out today. I'm using high tack fabric glue, and I have another one here ready to go. I'm just going to make sure there's no no. I think that's ready to go. I'm just yeah, I'm just squeezing a small piece. I always have a little bit piece in here. But what I'm going to do for speed today, I'm just double checking I've got the right side of my fabric. Um, and I'm just going to decide, I think I'm going to adhere this to the fabric. I'm just checking it doesn't go through. You can't see any of that pattern. Um, and this is obviously going to be completely covered up. So I'm happy to do the pattern side. Although that would make a nice inside cover as it is, wouldn't it? Oh, fly. Sorry. I hope it was a fly. <laughs> That's the trouble with this weather that made me jump. Oh, and my roof's fixed. Yay! Um, so since my last video this morning, I've had two cupboard, cupboards, kitchen units put into my kitchen. And I've had my roof and chimney repaired. Which is really good news. Although they can't guarantee that's what it is. If it rains and it comes through, I have to call them while it's raining. So that's um, that's good, it's good. They've done what they think they need to do. There was some flashing problem around the chimney and a couple of tiles on the roof had been blown about. Right, I'm gonna do that for now and I'm gonna make sure this has a really nice, even, thin covering of glue. And I do prefer this to the Aileen's Tacky Glue for covers, I must say. Um, I haven't used this for paper, um, only for fabric, but it does feel like a very similar kind of PVA tacky kind of glue. It just seems to move around a bit better for me. I don't know why. It's really important you get all of those edges. Now I'm going to pop this down and then flip it over. Take my bone folder and I really push that down. Now one thing I have already done to this book, I forgot to show you. What I do is I take my bone folder and I just go along the sharp edges of the board that I've cut. I mean, it is it is quite sharp actually and it just smooths it off very, very slightly but you've still got a nice edge. Um, and I've already done it to this cover, so. That is our first one nicely put down. Now, where's my little scraps? You need to have at least the book board um, thickness in between each of your pieces. Now, I do it two ways. This one, I have used a single width. I don't do this by eye because if I did, my books wouldn't be straight. I use something as a guide. I just do. And this is a nice flat edge that side. Now, 
this one I have done singularly and the book will close nicely um, and you can push in your fabric into the gaps now on some occasions um, and I do this quite often on the larger journals I do a double thickness in between in between here and what I would do is I would glue the inside and butt those up okay um, I haven't really decided what we're going to do with this one because I don't want it to be a complicated book. I want it to be fairly easy for you to do. And this fabric is it's a little bit thicker so I'm not sure we're going to get that but really nice. Um, it's a lot easier on a thinner fabric so I'm just going to go probably a single thickness as I did with this journal because you, like I said you still get your nice ridge you can force your fabric in and it's still going to close yeah so let's do the next one so I need that as my guide I'm trying to give you the little the little tips and hints and tricks that I use but at the end of the day um, everybody is going to make their journals differently and that's the beauty of it isn't it if we all made them the same it wouldn't be interesting watching YouTube anymore that's for sure <laughs> it would get very boring wouldn't it okay so same again Oh my days, I hope I've pressed record. Oh yeah. Because that would be pants. I've probably got a bit too much glue on here. Okay, so I'm going to take my guide. I'm going to pop that in. I've got a little bit of wiggle room, so it's quite good with this, with this glue. The most important thing is you line up the top and the bottom. Woo. Flip it over and give it a good burnish to get that fabric nicely on to your board. Okay, so one side left before we trim. I'm hoping this is just going to be one video. I mean, I would normally do this um, easily in 30 minutes, um, but I've obviously talked about other stuff and hopefully I can still get the video done in that 30 minutes. It's like a race against time. My daughter used to watch a programme, I can't remember what it was, but they, they used to say that. It's a race against time. Probably those of you in the UK may remember it. I think what I'm going to do is start using the glue that's in my, in my pot. It's starting to get a little bit difficult to get that out. So just concentrate on those edges. This doesn't dry anywhere nearly as, as quickly as tacky glue. So you're, you know, you have some time with fabric glue. Oh, it's really quiet. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever get this video done today. So my daughter has new shelves in her bedroom. I have two new cupboards in my kitchen. And I'd have, hopefully, a roof that doesn't leak. And I'm getting Chinese food <laughs> tonight. <laughs> and try and catch up on some time. So I'm not cooking. Yum, yum. Okay. So 
we're right at the edges we've got all our edges done I'm going to take my guide pop it down pop our board into place I don't want this too tight. And the same again. Just, we're just going to give that a really good burnish down to make sure our fabric is well and truly stuck on our board. You can see we've got a nice little which there if we want. Okay. So I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna pop the lid on this one. And what we're gonna do now is just trim. I haven't got a water pot for our uh, glue. Right, I'm taking my fabric scissors. And that's probably about right. Um, how big is this? I'm sorry if you can hear the fly. It's about two centimetres. Um, maybe, maybe not quite an inch. And I'm sorry about the noise of the scissors on the glass. I'm going to try and move it a little bit. <laughs> that's a really loud fly. I, I don't actually turn around just in case it's not a fly. I don't, I hate wasps, I don't use that word very lightly, but they're not very nice. Bees I love, wasps not so much, although flies are a pain. It's the noise they make, they're so loud. <laughs> I would normally have this flat against my board, um, but obviously it makes quite a noise, so I'll probably cut that slightly too short now holding it up. Right, so what we're going to do is we need to make sure we've got enough to come over our corner. So, I mean, I, I just eyeball it, but I suppose, what's that, half a centimetre? doesn't have to be much, but you just need a bit. Probably made that one a bit too small now. okay that is okay you just it needs to obviously cover that corner right so this is where I get out my fabric tack um, I, I just find fabric tack so much easier um, although it's a bit messy this particular fabric tack has got extremely hot and it's very very um, thick and gloopy but it's still going to do the job better than I think any other glue that's my opinion we all have one and I like Fabri-Tac for this job so I just put a bead along there um, at the gap um, and I lift and I flip and then I turn it and I make sure that is really nicely held down I take my bone folder and just pop a little gap there I mean, it's not actually going to adhere to anything, um, but I just like to put that crease in. And we have, if we turn it over, a very nice flat edge. Okay, I'm really <laughs> sorry about the fly, that's so loud. Okay, and I'm going to do the same this side. A little bead of glue just along the edge. And I make sure I get the the very edge. And what I'm not too worried about is getting too high up the book cover because we can add glue afterwards. The most important thing is getting the edge and getting that folded over fairly quickly. Okay. Now 
this fabric has got a little bit of give in it so it's quite important that you do stretch it slightly to make sure you don't get a sag on your book cover so you can see that's looking really pretty and now we are going to do the edges now I do this the same way I do a little bead all the way along the edge and then along here now this bit is a little bit more tricky because we need to push in those edges and we need to lift yep. of course it's not going to go as as well because I'm filming obviously now what I will do is I can see that I need to trim a little bit here so I'm going to trim that now these scissors are pants because I do use this quite a lot for glue and you do need to take time over your corners I know Fabri-Tac dries really quickly but you do need to take your time to get a nice corner Same again this side, little bead all the way along here. It is always the way though, things are never, I don't think they are for me anyway, never as smooth once I've got that camera rolling. going to do is I just give this a minute and then what I do is I come back and I lift and wherever I haven't got glue I will add some I'm not too worried because we do adhere this down obviously once we add our paper covers but I'm going to just stand very quickly and see how much time um, I'm pretty much spot on but can you see how neat those corners actually are so that's part one of our book cover. Now, I'm literally running out of minutes, but what I do is I would just come in, add these creases back in, and as you can see, I'm gonna come back and glue these, but we're gonna have a nice book cover. So that's how I make my fabric covers um, using old book board. Um, I do also do the same process with plywood. The plywood is slightly harder to cut. Um, I will be back maybe today um, because I want to talk to you about gutting books um, ready for our second book cover because we're kind of making these simultaneously. Um, I'm about to cut off so I will say goodbye. I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and leave me a comment. I'll speak to you soon. Bye!